And I've been called far worse, so. <laughs> um, anyway, tonight I want to talk about something that is on everybody's mind. And it's not like I want to make everybody persuaded completely. I just want people to think about it and that hopefully I persuade them to think about it and make their own choice when the time comes, if that makes sense. Sometimes we have to make choices about what is best for us while considering the wider impact. Tonight, I would, I would like to talk about a decision we all will have to make in the coming months or year. The country and our world have been living through this pandemic following the news, following the news and competing stories about the race to develop a vaccine, which may allow us to return to some semblance of normal life and work. And I just wanted to urge people to think about it, get all the information, talk with their doctor and make that decision, hopefully in months, not years. The attempt to develop a polio vaccine looks to have parallels to what is happening now. In the 1930s, there were attempts to make a vaccine and they had difficulties proving it to be safe and effective. One of the things was they didn't have a control group, which is a group that you do not give the actual medicine to. And you see what happens between the two groups. It's one of the things they're talking about now about the COVID vaccine. And one of the research that actually was fired because some people actually died. And another one of his partners didn't take the fall and ended up continuing to work on it. And in 1955, Dr. Salk, who many of us have heard of, he actually got approved an inactive viral vaccine, which they inactive the virus and they give it to you by a shot. And then in, there was another parallel going on as to can we have a weakened vaccine that would be given orally? Well, in 1961, Dr. Sabin got approval for that. So that was given more, more in other countries and the shot was given more in the United States. Uh, on personal note, my uncle who fought in World War II he developed polio before I was born in the early 50s and lost the use of his lower legs, a lot of it. And he ended up developing his stomach muscles to learn how to get to walk again and became a successful real estate uh, appraiser and broker. My oldest cousin there, the oldest daughter, got a little bit of it and she's had a few muscles in the bottom of her legs that had a problem but didn't have it to that extent. I was old enough that I and some other people here may have had the shots when they first came out or early in it. And we'd go to my uncle's house because he was a doctor and my mom would give him something to give us our shot. Well, as soon as I knew my time was coming, I'd start running around the house and my brothers and my cousin would have to run after me, chase me, bring me back and I'd have to be held down in order to give the shot. Uh, that's not untypical of a kid, but I think I was worse. Anyway, 1961, they started giving it the, the oral one in a sugar cube. And some of you may have had that. And we went to church and they gave us a sugar cube. Well, that was no problem. I liked having sugar. So I ate that. And they found that over the years that polio basically was pretty much eradicated. In 1988, 350,000 people were counted as having it. In 2018, 33. Uh, they've had a little bit of a resurgence in recent years because there are some places where people don't like to give their children vaccine. I had a student that he was born in the Philippines while his parents didn't want to do that. He ended up, one of his legs was paralyzed. He's a great kid, but it, the, you know he was a, adopted by somebody in the US Navy, but it, he'd already you know, the leg had already been paralyzed. There are some hopes that a safe and effective vaccine for COVID-19 will be, begin to be available early next year. Dr. Fauci estimates that about 60% of the population will have to either be vaccinated 
or have an immunity through either being exposed or having had the virus. And the virus, evidently, you do get at least a, a limited period of immunity. It doesn't necessarily last forever. The question is, well, and in order to do that, to achieve the stop of widespread transmission, so we can go out and go back to normal and not have to wear a mask all the time, is will enough people be willing to do that? The, and my purpose is not to tell you that you must be vaccinated. I'm going to follow my doctor's advice and decide once the vaccine is in thoroughly tested, safe and effective, then you know I'll decide whether I'm going to do it. I, I probably will. I know it is a very personal decision and I just would like everyone to think when the time comes to talk to their doctor or medical people they trust and make that decision for themselves.